Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to MBR, or as we like to call it around here, Nothing But Rants, the show where I find topics that I'm oddly passionate about, and I pontificate upon them. These are not hot takes, but rather takes that I'm hot about. Let's shut up and grind some tape. What is up, my beautiful people? Welcome into the Film God Network on a wonderful Thursday evening. It's actually Thursday afternoon here in the studio. We are actually pre-recording a film study for you guys. Going to replace one of the hours on the two-hour show tonight with an hour of film study. So welcome in. Glad to have you here. As you can tell by the title, okay, we're going to be taking a look at this new offense that Alabama will be bringing over from Washington with head coach Kalen DeBoer and Ryan Grubb, the offensive coordinator, coming with him as well. Um, there's obviously a ton to talk about. There's a lot of uh, uh, preconceived notions about this offense. A lot of people watched it in uh, very brief moments last year and got to see you know all the passing concepts that they have and all the all the the yardage through the air that they put up and all the weapons that they have at wide receiver and of course they won a joe moore award as well um led the nation in passing and, and everybody kind of hyper focused on that and as you should be we'll talk a lot about that tonight on the film study but before you even get into the passing concepts um i thought this was an immensely complicated run scheme Okay, obviously just talked about it. They were the Joe Moore award-winning football program uh, for the nation's best offensive line. Um, I thought a lot of that, what you're going to see, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the resetting of the line of scrimmage, a lot of the lack of penetration, a lot of the protection uh, created by this offensive line was actually due in large part more to the scheme. There's a lot of damage done by the scheme uh, to the defensive front uh, from this Washington unit that you're going to see today than there was more so offensive line play, though there was some really, or there is some really, really good offensive line play on this film study that we're going to show you. It's, you're going to leave far more impressed with the complexity of the scheme than you are the execution of the scheme, I, I think. At least I was. Um, that being said, okay, there, there's going to be an identity change. If, if, if everything remains the same, if they are going to transplant this offense, okay, over to Alabama and over to the SEC, there's going to have to be some identity change, some cultural change with regards to just how they recruit and how they stack their roster, uh, particularly on the offensive line, right? You could say a lot about, hey, they had three NFL you know, wide receivers. Yes, they did. They also had an offensive line that was really, really predicated off of athleticism and not, much, not necessarily as much brute force as what we've kind of known Alabama to be. Alabama has recruited the offensive line position as well as anybody in this sport, but they have prioritized size. I think we have noticed that over particularly the last 18 months at Alabama, right? They were bigger than 98% of NFL offensive lines this year. I think they averaged 6'5", 360 across the board. That is not what Washington is. In fact, that is not what Kalen DeBoer and Grubb's system predicates offensive linemen to be. It actually asks them to be extremely, extremely versatile and athletic because they are versatile and athletic in their schemes. The base of their run blocking, the base of their run scheme, in my opinion, and what we're going to show you, it is misdirection in order to gash. What do I mean by that? Well, I just told you they're extremely complex in their run scheme, and we're going to show you that. They're misdirection plays, right? These are plays like counter, all right? And I saw them run counter in a variety of ways. I saw them run, and you're going to see them run counter with uh, the guard and the tight end. You're going to see them run counter with guard and the tackle. You're going to see them even run counter with the center and the tackle, all of which can be wrapped off of. We're going to show you what that means here in a little bit. So one play can be ran seven different ways on top of the fact that they have pass options built off of these counter plays as well, okay? They have truck sweep in their misdirection plays. They have pin and pull in these misdirection plays. Hell, I saw them run trap in this game against Oregon that we're going to show you. I also saw them run quarterback truck. So you got all of these different misdirection plays in order to stretch, manipulate, uh, get you to focus, get you to have to, uh, you know, identify concepts, strike, shed blocks, okay, while also not really penetrating, okay, because you can't penetrate when they're doing all this misdirection stuff that we're going to show you, okay, it's all set up to gash you with their more traditional zone concepts, right, they have misdirection in the playbook in order to gash you and gut you off of these, uh, you know, zone concepts, which are standard, inside zone, split zone duos, and a little bit of stretch, bottom line, it's really complex, and it's really different than what Alabama's been doing over the last couple of years. 
Over the last couple of years, we've shown you on this channel, Alabama's, Alabama's been a lineup and beat your football team. We are better than you, so we don't have to be schematically great. We are better than you. Well, they're about to add some schematical greatness into their, form, or, you know, into their formula. All right, on top of all of those variety of run complexes and, and run concepts, I should say, they motion on 65% of snaps. So 65% of the time, whatever you're looking at pre-snap is going to change. All right, there's going to be some movements. And on top of that, they're running about 17 different types of concepts at you at all times. Oh, and oh, by the way, I saw them in this one football game run 11, 12, 13, 21, and 10 personnel. Again, Alabama's going, and we're about to show you Alabama's going from a football team that was line them up, beat them up, to a totally different concept and totally different thought process and much more complex in concept. Um, now let's talk about the passing concepts. I'm confident he will be able to scheme guys open. I'm confident they will be able to scheme guys open. But I think what we're going to watch and what a lot of this is half offensive schematical good greatness, right? A lot of that's going to translate and a lot of damn that quarterback's really good, and those three wide receivers are really good. So if you can get that type of combination, and you are to assume Alabama will be able to recruit like they always have, they're going to be able to get wide receivers and quarterbacks like they always have, Ryan Williams being one of which. Okay, if you believe that to be true, then you are to believe that they will be able to translate all of this today, despite the fact that Penix isn't coming with them, Adunze isn't coming with them, Jalen Polk isn't coming with them, all the stuff that we're going to watch today technically isn't coming but a lot of the guts are. So welcome in tonight. If you have found us via the algorithm, thank you, Lord, for being here. All right, make sure you subscribe. If you like anything that you see tonight, we do this Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday here on the channel. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. I love you. Like, subscribe, rate, review. Leave a comment as well. With that being said, I want to give a quick shout out to our friends at Prize Picks. Use promo code Brooks over on PrizePicks.com today. You will get 100% deposit match. You know what that means. Put up to $100, you'll get $100 match instantly. You can tell I'm in a hurry because we got a lot to watch. Hey, we got a saying around here, and it's been a little minute since we're in that offseason so since we've gotten into it. Hey, let's shut up and let's grind the tape. I am, and I mean I am, in here by myself. So let's make sure everything is running properly. Okay, before I run over here to the board, meaning, is the lav hot? The lav is hot. Let's go, baby. Are we going to get any epic pin problems today? Probably, but you know what? We're going to punch right through them. Hey, glad to have you here. Again, if you are an Alabama fan, if you are a Washington fan, if you are a Who Gives a Hell fan, all right, make sure you're subscribing. We love to talk football around this here network. All right, we told you to start the show. Tons and tons and tons of pre-snap motion. Every time you play this football team, understand that you're going to get some dressing, right? You're going to get some window dressing. And everything, and I do mean everything, has options off of it. They've got Adunze over here working whatever he's got. This is Jalen Polk running into the flat right here. Also, by the way, running inside zone. Okay, standard zone to the front side of this football play right here to start the game. Okay, so you're going to get a bunch of different looks. You're going to have to cover a bunch of different things at all times. As all great offenses do nowadays, as all great offenses do nowadays, you're going to get a bunch of work. Um, and at Alabama, guys, these wide receivers, I thought Washington was something that didn't get talked about a lot is they blocked really, really well out on the edge as well. They're really, really good, or this system is really, really good in screens, okay? Everything out in the flat is really, really attacked and cleaned up really, really well. All right, on to our next play. We got counter RPO. That's what I was telling you about earlier. So you saw inside zone right off the rip, all right, with some RPO action off into the flat. Here, we're going to pull the guard and the tackle. All right, we're going to pull the guard and the tackle. Front side guard's going to kick. Backside guard or backside tackle is going to add in. He is the decision maker, right? Hey, if we get logged or if we get squeezed from this front side defensive end, if he pulls down hard, we're going to bounce outside of it. I told you, every single one of these counters has a wrap built into it. They obviously, obviously do a great job coaching this up at Washington, and they will bring this. Coaching translates, okay, for the most part. All right, as long as the systems are implemented accurately every single time, all right, they, they, that stuff should translate in terms of how they go about executing certain things. Great job by here from the backside tight end. Inside, right, getting inside this backside defensive end right there and climbing up to the backside inside linebacker. Boom. We got This is what we're talking about when we say hats on hats. We want to make sure everybody is accounted for. He is the free defender. We're leaving him free. Everybody else, right, double team on that guy, double team on that guy, double team on that guy. We got two guys up to the front side. Boom. We're licked. All right, we got all the things added in and accounted for in what is a favorable box for us 
in that run scheme count right there. Again, with the RPO built off the back of it. Now, they're not reinventing the systems. All right, everybody kind of does this. It's the ability to do all of these things. We hear about all these college coordinators get, uh, you know, uh, you know, investigated by NFL teams to maybe hire them to bring that stuff up. This stuff translates more than any spread stuff that I've ever seen. This team huddles. This team uh, runs multiple personnel. This team runs multiple motions. This team does all the things that we see on Sundays here in college football. I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is it didn't feel very gimmicky to me when I studied it. A lot of college systems that we watch seem and feel very, very gimmicky to me when we go to study it. Okay, I told you they're going to prioritize athleticism on that offensive line. Big, fat, slow, got to go. Big, fat, slow, got to go right here at Alabama moving forward. Okay. Boom, there's the pin and pull. They're going to get that left tackle out. They're going to get that center out, and they're out on the edge. They're trying to get big guys on little guys and find a crease out there. It doesn't get executed right here. That's not the point. We're here to show you what they're actually doing, who they are. They're a stretch. Get everything out, misdirection. Boom, boom, boom. Attack the edges. Swat right there. Stretch or inside zone right down your gut, right? That's what they're trying to do in their run scheme, all right? And as the, as the show develops... What you will see is this defensive line from Oregon, who's coached up really, really well, right? Coached up with some SEC principles, by the way. It's kind of why we chose this one. All right, these SEC principles, these defensive linemen who are coached up very similar to where uh, the way that everybody is down here. A at some point in, in the middle of this football game, they just they just give up on giving getting penetration because they have so many different things coming at them that they can't get upfield. All right, here's what I'm talking about. All right, boom, here comes the counter again, right? We got a guard and a tackle coming here. Oh, look, there's the H tight as well to add in on this front side. Surely we're getting counter over here. All the flow and everybody wants to eat up on counter over here. And then, oh, by the way, boom, they got the RPO out here on the edge. Okay, and that's what they throw. They got the little screen out there to Adunze. And now we got one-on-one. -on -one. We got blocking out here. And Adunze essentially versus that corner uh, that's got to come downhill and hit. A good six, seven yards, all right, just manipulating with the box counts. Okay? Too many potential answers out of bunch, all right? Too many potential answers out of bunch. They like to bunch. They bunch out of duos. They bunch out of trips. All right, they, they, they bunch, they bunch, they bunch, they bunch, and then they spread. All right, they do it all. So I'm trying to tell you. Now, what Oregon is trying to do is they're trying to put a point man right here. You're man-to-man you're, you're -man with the point, all right, the guy at the top of this stack, right? If there was a triangle right here, that is the point. All right, you are man-to-man -man with the point. You're going to play inside leverage. You're going to play outside leverage. You're going to play over-the-top leverage. So as an offensive coordinator, all right, if that's the picture, if we got inside outside, top side, all right, man to man, what should we do with these two guys? And this being number one, Roma Dunze. Well, if we only got one guy covering in and one guy covering out and this guy's adding into the box, hey, maybe we should attack two guys into the middle of the field. And that's exactly what he does right here. He throws two, uh, two receivers into a bracket bunch, right? Open to start the football game. Here on third and five, probably uh, new via some film study, that's probably what we're gonna get. We're gonna get some type of bracket coverage, all right? Or what I call here on this channel bracket coverage because it looks like a pair of parentheses to me, guys. That's why I call it bracket coverage. I don't know what everybody else calls it. My terminology is mine here on the channel, all right? If I got bracket coverage, I got one guy playing inside leverage. Let's run two guys into the inside leverage and we will ultimately win right there, which is exactly what happens, okay? So yeah, great processing, great little route right there from Adunze, but in all honesty, great conceptual design, and here's a great look at it, great conceptual design right here from the offensive coordinator. Also a great pickup by Seven right there, picking up the, uh, the linebacker, or excuse me, the running back, or excuse me, yeah, the linebacker right there filling in the front side of the gap. But here you see the look, right? We're going to run you in as well, and we're going to run you in as well, and you only have one guy covering there on that inside bracket. Boom. There's the look. Nice, clean pitch and catch for our quarterback. Now, here's what I love. And when I went and studied them, bro, and, and look, I, this, this is a year two study, right? This is one of their biggest games. This is the second year in the system for a lot of these guys, quarterback included, wide receivers included. Now, look, third and 16, ball at the 20, 21, 
A lot of teams handing this ball off, right? A lot of teams handing this ball off. They're going to, uh, you know, very safely and securely kick this field goal. Hell, ball on the left hash, maybe even run it towards the middle of the field. We're going to go ahead and settle for a field goal. It's third and 16. Not a lot of plays in the playbook for third and 16, except for we're Washington, all right? And we really, really like our quarterback. We think our quarterback's really, really good. So if you're showing me some type of, you know, cover two or some type of coverage where down here, you obviously like Kirk's pointing out right here, you obviously have double coverage over here. That guy looks to me like he's about to bring some pressure. I would imagine he bails post snap. So now I have what is to be a one-on-one -on, -one on this seam right here if I want it. And that's exactly what he calls, or that's exactly what he throws right here. And you can see, man, this is a perfect ball. It just doesn't get completed. So when I see this, I have two questions. All right, one, do you have a quarterback in the room right now at Alabama that can do this? I'm going to say no. All right, but then again, y'all did live in a bunch of third and 16s last year, and you did convert a, four, uh, convert a fourth and 31. All right, but that ball right there placed away from that receiver, or excuse me, that DB, in the one spot that it can be, I don't know if there's anybody in the room right now that we know of for a fact that can put that ball there. Now it gets dropped. Also, we got to worry about whether or not you got the weaponry. Nonetheless, we see the ideology and the thought process of the coordinator, which is to never give up, all right? And never just concede points or to just, okay, we'll play for the field goal. There's very little of that in this coordinator's uh, you know, demographics as a play caller, I should say. Not demographics, but history as a play caller. Okay, so ballsy, ballsy play call right there. We get another replay of it right here. I like it, um, and, and I like that the quarterback had the balls to throw it while also keeping his eyes right. Y'all see that? All right, eyes right. He knows. I got bracket coverage over there. This is cooked, guys. It's, it's two over one. There's a corner over here, and here's Roma Dunze. This is done. This whole side of the field is screwed. He's never going over here. All right, but what he's doing is he's trying to get this uh, safety to pull. Trying to get this safety off the numbers and off the hash so he can't get into that mix over there. Again, this is like year four for Penix in this system, right? Spent two years in Indiana with uh, DeBoer as his coordinator, I believe, and then came over here to Washington, finished out, okay, in this system here as well. So very, very confident in the system, understands what he's got going on, sets back over here, and doesn't take his eyes there until he's already in motion. Already in motion. This is what I'm talking about, 50 50. Is it the system? Yes. Hey, we, we identified the coordinator. We said, hey, great job with some ballsy call right there. But it's also probably due in large part to the fact that the quarterback's really, really good and really, really experienced at this point in his career. Let's make sure we're in as high HD as we possibly can be. All right. Yeah, what a ball and what a ballsy play call. Hey, <laughs> I am a big believer in if you're going to evaluate players and you don't know much about them, just watch what the coordinator does with them. Just watch what the coach does with them. You'll probably figure out a little bit about what the coach thinks of that player as an athlete or at least what they think about his skill set. This number four, uh, punt returner right here, he is transferring to Alabama. And you're going to see in this football game, he got punt return snaps, he got kick return snaps, and he got a bunch of jet sweeps. And that's it. Now, I'm not saying he can't do the other stuff. I'm just telling you that they think this guy is really, really great with the ball in his hands. And you can see why. Okay, so this is coming. This is coming to the SEC. So there you go. And look, if you, and I, have a, I, have a, I have a firm theory and belief on Oregon's football team. Okay, since Mario Cristobal spent about three years recruiting there, and Dan Lanning spent about 36 months recruiting there, okay, or not that long, about 20 months uh, recruiting there. I'm going to tell you this right now. They got some speed. They got some dudes on that field. So they ain't slappies out there getting ran by by this number four who, again, is coming to the SEC. We'll be seeing about this transfer a little bit more as the study progresses. Going on to 234. Okay, look at all the window dressing here, guys. Check this out. We're going to get Polk in motion. All right, he's going to motion, but he's also going to slap the butt of the tight end. The tight end's going to flip. And then right before the snap, we're going to get Jalen Polk back over here to run a little bubble tunnel over here to the field. Check this out. So, boom, got the slap of the butt of the tight. Oh, and I forgot, we're going to flip the back, too. Y'all see all that? So here we go. We're going to run in motion. We're going to tap the tight. We're going to flip the whole thing, all right, with the back as well. Oh, everything's copacetic, right? 14 seconds left on the play clock. Surely they're about to just snap the ball. You would be incorrect. They're going to bring orbit motion now, and boom, now we're going to run the daggum swing screen into the flat. I, I just feel like 
for those who didn't study this football program last year and they hear about this West Coast hire and they hear about this Pac-12 hire and they hear about this, they led the nation in passing, you probably came to this study expecting them to play fast, get on the ball, no huddle type stuff, bullshit. These guys take more of the play clock than anybody other not named Michigan in the playoffs this year. They do a lot, a lot of pre-snap work. They're trying to identify as much as they can with window dressing while also complicating your systems as a defense, okay? So this is what I'm talking about, all right? The, a, a, sometimes they play, you know, relatively slow. Now the ball's been set, right? Got 27 seconds left on the play clock, second and three. Now earlier, when they gave that trips bunch look, what did we say we got? We said we on this channel, we call it bracket, right? We got an outside parenthesis, inside parenthesis. We got a point man and the safety over the top. Essentially, they have four guys over here for R3. They have more numbers than we do. Last time we attacked it, right? Last time we attacked it with a little, uh, you know, simple get open concept. I can't quite remember what we saw, um, but we saw them get open with this out of the predetermined read. I know what it was. We ran two into the one, right? We ran two into the one, and we ultimately got it open. This time, all right, once we see, again, that bracket covers that four over three, now guess what? Now they are outnumbered in here, okay? Now we have them beat with the number count inside. So how are we going to absolutely really, really take advantage of the fact that we have a number count inside? Well, now we're going to run counter back into the short side of the field as you try to take four guys over there, okay? I believe it's actually pin and pull here to the short side, but nonetheless, we saw as an offensive coordinating staff how you reacted to Trips Bunch to the top of the field. Okay, last time we got the Trips Bunch into the short side. This time we're putting the Trips Bunch into the wide side, and we're going to run pin and pull back down to the short side where you're ultimately a little bit vulnerable. Okay, and this is how we know you over pursue one, two, three, four, five guys over pursue. And there's our crease, right? And there's our crease right there in the alleyway. The, the star or the linebacker that's been flexed out to play that inside of that bracket coverage is the last one to turn this play back in. Okay? And watch the replay here. So I'm talking about with athleticism. Hey, Mel Kuyper, you're wrong. Mel Kuyper, you're wrong. And here's why. How on earth do we watch this left tackle do this to Jordan Burks? This is a four eye, and he is about to full reach him on wide zone. And if you don't understand that, then you probably should. Okay, how? how? How do we look at this and we say, yeah, yeah, that guy did that that easily. That guy did that that easily by himself, no help. No, no, no inside veer release from the guard. No, no stab to protect the space. No, nothing. We just swallow this four eye by ourselves, okay? Nice and crispy footwork. Where are we at? How, how are we projecting this to guard? I don't understand that. But here's what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about Alabama again, hey, guys, find, find me right now. Find me the tackle on Alabama's roster that's full scoop and four eyes by themselves. Do it. Y'all gonna have to recruit it. Y'all gonna have to recruit it or you're gonna have to change it, one or the other. You have to recruit it or you got to change it. Same thing with his backside left guard. They're pulling him as well. The only way they can get him out, the only reason they can get him out on this essentially pseudo pin and pull play, the only reason they can get him out is because the left tackle is that big of a freak. Again, by some draft experts getting kicked in the guard, I, I do not subscribe to such theories. All right, we're going to 330. Uh, no, we're 315 right here. This is trap, essentially. Okay? Not essentially. It is. All right, they're back into Tripp's bunch right here, which bumps this defensive end out over the tight end. And watch how the tight end, what we call inside veer releases this guy and gets up to the front side inside linebacker. The defensive end gets upfield and the backside guard pulls and traps this backside defensive end. I don't know how many teams are running trap these days, but we don't see it a ton. We don't. That's one guard trap right there. Bang. All right, and it opens up a crease right there in B-gap. All right, so we're, we're still in the, the second drive of this football game, guys. We're in the second drive of this football game. We've seen pin and pull. We've seen truck sweep. We've seen inside zone. We've seen trap. We've seen counter. And there comes another counter play right there on this next clip, okay? And he's going to force you. 
He's going to absolutely force you, okay? Got back into trips bunch, knows good and damn well, okay, again, that you're going to play four over three. Now you have five in the box, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, plus a back, okay? I have a plus one count. As an offensive coordinator, I have a plus one count. He is going to force teams to play light boxes every single time. And now, this is not uncommon in college football, all right? A lot of teams are doing this. A lot of teams are, and a lot of defenses are conceding this point, Georgia being one of them. Georgia almost, like, loves to be under minus counts because they're like, we're big, bad Georgia. So that's another thing you have to take into account. They're bringing this into a conference where there's a lot of defense that's like, yeah, I mean, no shit. We've been playing minus counts since August, so what's up? All right, we're good. We're, our, our four are going to handle your four. So that's kind of what you've got to have to be able to handle all of these run schemes. Great job by the Mike linebacker scraping and striking. That's what it's going to have to be. You've got to have a linebacker play that looks like that to ultimately st shut these run games down. I saw there was a lot of statistics about, um, you know, they, they don't run for 150 yards a game, Brooks. Like, you're, you're out here spending a lot of time on, a, on an offense that doesn't run the ball a ton. That's not the point. They might only run it 19, 20 times a game, but they give so many different looks in that 19, 20 attempts a game that the defensive line comes off the ball and they're like doing this the whole time. And then when Penix takes a three-step drop and hits a speed out or a, an out for 12 yards or takes a five-step with a hitch and hits a daggum post for 55 yards, and everybody's like, why is there no pressure? Well, there's no pressure because defensive linemen have been standing up doing this for the whole first quarter. All right, and that's what we're seeing right now on film. I also think Grubb, the offensive coordinator here, does a really great job of finding and isolating, isolating his best players, right? This is a Dunze coming in motion. Now, they're trying everything they can to eliminate number one, like everybody does. So what are we going to do? We're going to motion him off the snap, okay, and then give him essentially a free release because they can't bump and run him, right? Number eight's got to cross and travel with him, and now look at all this leverage. We snap the ball out of a stack, and number eight is the one who is responsible for a Dunze on what is ultimately this uh, like little goal line route. Like we're going to act like we're running a fade and then we're going to sink our hips down, try to get our head back around on the front pylon. All right. And they draw a PI right here because of it. They draw a PI right here because of it. You'll get a look at the replay here in a sec. But again, that's a, that's a critical situation, right? Our first, our, our second opportunity to get back in the red zone. We're behind the sticks on a second and nine right there, I believe it was. All right. And we're going to attack via our best player. Our best option is Roma Dunze. Hey, let's get a beater to it. Really great job of getting the ball into, our, uh, into the hands of our critical football players. Hey, you're going to have to get athletic. You're going to have to get athletic. Look at the offensive line. Again, look at 55 out there. And you're going to tell me that some bitch is a guard? What are we doing, baby? Hey, here's, here's a little tip for you, evaluators. You see an offensive lineman with some O-line swag? Look at my man. He got the, he got the, he's a tackle. He got the tackle or the, the, the towel drip. He got the ankle spat. He got the, the, the turf tape. He got the wrist spat. He out here with the visor. My boy Cole. My boy Cole, if he out here moving like this, that is a tackle. And I would draft that sucker in the first round, too, after watching him. He is a ball player. Look at this dude. Kirk, Kirk out here, they, they gave my man Kirk a, a, a switcher, and he out here going crazy. All right, he'll have somebody having a seizure with some epilepsy out here with the all up and down. But you see, hey, look at all the space, right? Look at all the grass that they're attacking right here with this pin and pull action. Going to 440. Actually, going back to 428. So number four, transferring to Bama. Pay attention to usage. Pay attention to usage. They think this guy's a yak guy. All right, he's going to come to Alabama and get the jet sweeps. He's going to come to Alabama and get the, the tosses and, and get the screens and all this stuff. All right, that's what he got last year. That's how they will start with this dude, I would imagine. Again, another critical situation, third and five right here. Uh, Roma Dunze is currently hidden in the backfield right here. All right, that's the tight end, and Adunze is on the other side. They look like they're an ace. They are not. Or deuce, excuse me. They're going to motion him out, all right? They're going to motion him out, 
run him on a speed out while rolling the quarterback left here on third and five. Getting the ball into our best player's hands on critical downs. That's good coordinating. All right, that's good coordinating. But this is what I love on this next play. They convert a first down. That's all great here. Third and six, man. I, I don't. I don't know how many. I don't know how many guys are doing this one. I don't know how many guys are doing this one. Here's what they got. All right, they're gonna get some type of. Let me take a look at it real quick. All right, yeah. Here we go. All right, I think it's a mirrored concept. Honestly, the point man is gonna run basically a dig. The secondary guy is gonna work an out and an up. All right, so the point man's basically going to run some type of dig. The secondary man is going to run an out and up. All right, it's a mirrored concept both sides. Now, here's the thing about this. It's third and six. The ball's on our own 37, our own 36. This is not we're playing for converting the sticks. This is playing for here on third and six. We are trying to take a cut, just an absolute shot. It's just not, it's, it's outside of traditional play calling. Normally on some type of play call like this, you design some type of winner, especially over the middle of the field right here, right? They end up getting bail coverage from the tight or from the linebackers. But nonetheless, look, the speed out looks like it's open right there. That's his helmet. All right, that's his helmet right there. The corner's going to suck down so hard on this right now, and then they're going to roll him out and up down the sideline. And it's open. They just miss it. So as, a, as someone evaluating the coordinating, right? That's what, I'm, that's what we're trying to do right here. We're trying to see what's going to translate. I'm going to tell you this right now. This ain't slowing down. All right, this is not slowing down. This is, this is footing the gas at all times as a coordinator. So as a defense, we, we can never, ever take a breath, feel like, hey, let's jump something underneath, play the sticks. Can't really play the sticks. This team doesn't play the sticks. They play chunks. All right? It's an aggressive-ass play call right there. You're going to look at it, uh, another look at it from the replay. Nice and easy on the, on, on the mirrored concepts, right? If I know I have the same exact thing over here, right? If I got this and I got this, all right? And then I got this and I got this. Well, this is the only defender that we haven't accounted for, right? We got one, two defenders, one, two defenders. He's on this side of the field, all right, so boom, we're marking that one out. Now we work this side of the field and we work it out to up to dig, right? Out to up to dig. Nice and easy for the cue, okay? Boom, just lets it rip and uh, yeah, that's a miss. But here's what you do need, all right? And I think, I think Jalen Milrow can do these things because it's, it's what most fans watching this tonight from the Bama fan base are gonna be doing. They're going to be talking about, hey, this guy versus that guy. Can this guy do the things that that guy was doing? Um, boys and girls, you better have a chooch on yourself to play for Kalen DeBoer. I don't know if it's the reason they got rid of Julian Sam, but I can, I can almost guarantee you right now it's the reason they recruited the Matt kid. The Matt kid's 6'6", 230 pounds, and when you're that big and presumably have that big of an arm, you can do things like this. They're going to motion, uh, I don't know, I can't remember, I think this is Polk right here. All right, and then they're going to run this big boy out. Bars on the, balls on the right hash. We're going to run a 12 to 15 yard out, okay, um, to Roma Dunze right here while clearing out with McMillan. All right, and, and in order to throw this ball, and you're going to see it, this is a big boy throw. This is a Sunday, got to have it. All right, first and 10, we're trying to get a chunk play, hold the safety midfield, get it on the five-step hitch and rip. All right, that's a ball. One, two, three, four, five, one hitch, ball out. It's a seed, folks. That's a big boy throw, all right? So you better have an arm on you. You better have an arm on you if you think you're going to play out here. All right, this next play, back into Tripp's bunch now with the nub on the backside, tight ends on the backside, all right? So um, I, I, I love these concepts right here. I think this is a concept that beats both um, man and zone, all right, or excuse me, uh, quarters and cover three, all right, it's a big time zone beater right here out of Tripp's bunch, and most of the time when you bunch, teams can't really press you or man coverage you anyways, okay, because you are in bunch formations, any type of crisscrossers absolutely abs just tear up our man coverage. We'll get a look at it here from the tight, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in terms of it's a three and four beater, okay, here's the replay. All right, we don't really know what coverage they're running, all right, we can't really 
you know, with 100% confidence tell you right now, hey, that's what they're running, right? We got eyes here on us. We got eyes here on us. We got eyes here on us, eyes here on us, eyes here on us. It just looks like a bunch of zone. That's what it really looks like. It looks like a bunch of zone. But we basically have a, uh, we have a post or excuse me, a corner right here from him. We have a dig right here from Adunze and we have the, the slow arrow right here from number two. So if it's cover three, we're gonna work corner down to flat, all right? If it's cover four, meaning if it's cover, if it's quarters, right? If we do something like this, that guy rolls into a, a, a curl or a, a zone, right? Zone hook right there, right? If it's quarters, we're gonna hit this dig right here in this second window. So we have an answer for both is what I'm trying to tell you. Right, we have an answer for both or whatever happens as the play develops and you'll see, all right, they, they fire the safety. So they fired the safety now. This guy's flat-footed. That guy looks like he's probably going to run to deep thirds. That guy's definitely got middle of the field. And now this guy's got here. So what did I tell you? I told you, against quarters, we're dig. All right? Against thirds, we are uh, corner to flat. All right? So he waits for it. He waits for it. Sees the middle of the field safety. All right? Gets to the back of his drop. Holds it just a tad. All right? And they hit that ball on that deep corner. So this is what I'm talking about when I say, like, are your, do your concepts make sense? I would say yes. We have answers for really everything right there. Against zone, I should say. We have answers against every zone coverage right there in that, you know, route tree. Six thirty six. another example. Hey, watch how they use their players. Number four, coming to Alabama. You guys get the point. They think he's a yak guy. Let's go to 650. All right, I said to open the show, and I don't know if I did, but against Washington this year, the only real answer was pressure and immediate pressure up the middle. All right, and even then, Texas got it, and, and you know, Penix had the game of his life. It was pressure, but it was also disguising coverages. You had to be able to disguise coverages. But anyways, no matter what happens, no matter what you run, I do believe eventually they will get guys open. All right, they will 100% get guys open. And here's what they're running right here. Bottom line, they got – somebody running the deep scissor, somebody running the shallow scissor, somebody pressing vertically, all right, and the tight end's doing something. Nonetheless, this is the concept. This deep over, this deep over. Somebody's gonna get caught in either trail technique or somebody's gonna be running to grass. If it's man, check to see who's trailing the worst. If it's zone, find the grass, right? Those are the two, two answers right here for this concept. And even though this ball is completed. I think he makes the wrong decision. Okay? He throws this ball. He throws this ball right here to Roma Dunze with the underneath covers. The, the linebacker flipped his hips and is now running underneath the Dunze. Whereas we can throw this one flat, all right, to Polk over here. So I think it's the wrong read, but it doesn't even matter because the ball is so great. All right, so this is the, that 50-50 that discussion I'm talking about when I say, hey, is it going to translate? Can they do that here? Well, 50% of it was this ball from this guy. But then again, like, hey, we, we didn't have to make it so hard on ourselves. We could have thrown that one flat right there. Any normal human can make that throw. The superstar makes this throw, right? The superstar puts it in a bucket like this. This is nuts. Boom. That's, that's a ball and a half right there. That is a ball and a half. You're going to have to force contested passes against this offense, though, with pressure. With pressure. Pressure and mixed coverages. Stressing that five-man box every chance they get, they, they guys. Every chance they get. Look, they're hiding Polk back here. All right? They're hiding Polk back here. They're going to they're gonna motion him out. All right, what that's going to do is it's going to pull the linebacker. So watch this. As we pull the backer, boom, there goes the backer. Now guess what we got, guys? Now we got a five-man box. Okay, now we got a five-man box, and this dude is forced to bring his ass into the box. So don't worry, next possession, we're going to get him too. All right, we're going to attack him the next time we see him creeping in on something like this. But you see the, the, the box count gets light really, really quickly, and they are not afraid in these really critical games, guys, to be able to run the football like this. Again, I do not know what you are looking at, Mel Kuyper. Look at this tackle and tell me he is anything other than one of the more athletic big fellas we got in this draft. Probably could unzip his feet a little bit more there at the next level, but nonetheless, you see it. Here's a pick on third and 10, and I'm telling you, like every other great offense, every other great quarterback, every other great coordinator, 
You put pressure at his feet, that's it. It's over with. It doesn't matter. It's the easiest answer in sports. Hey, how do you beat Patrick Mahomes? Get him on the ground, right? How do you beat Patrick Mahomes? Well, get pressure in his face. Well, how do you beat Michael Penix last year? You make the pocket look like that, all right? And even then, he wasn't going to turn it over very often. Um, but this is what I'm talking about. If you, even if you get pressure, if they pick it up, they're going to beat you. They're going to beat you because the concepts will beat you. The concepts are borderline flawless, and I think we'll get a replay of it right here. We do. All right, so here's the look. Here we go. He ends up throwing this deep over here, but it's running the grass, guys. They look like they're in some type of deep quarters. All right, everybody's bailing, and this running flat to grass is wide open. He just sails this ball because he's getting hit. Y'all see it? It's right there. If he throws that ball right there, wide ass open, going to run for a little bit. All right, but that, that ball is fl uh, flails on him because, again, the pressure. Pressure is the only answer for this football team last year. Pressure, and again, I thought Michigan did a tremendous job disguising coverages. We're going to show you one thing and do something totally different after the next one. Check this run scheme out. I love this. All right, you want to play a little mint front? That's cute. Y'all want to hang out in the mint out here in the SEC. You want to put a true zero, you want to put a three technique, you want to put your little jack back there, and then you want to play these big old defensive ends out here in the five tech. You want to leave B-gap out here just completely vacant. All you SEC jokers, all you mint 425 running SOBs, all y'all want to do this. All right, so what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, well, most teams just try to like, just kind of dig out this defensive end, and then we're going to combo these front side guys. We're going to leave front side Mike by himself. Uh, not what these guys do. These guys insert the H and turn it into a basically a combination block. It almost looks like H trap. Look at this. They bring the H in motion. All right. They got the standard combos on the front side. All these guys are working their standard combos. And now they have 37 in here to bang this hip while working up to this front side inside linebacker. For ricking brilliant. Brilliant. Brilliant run scheme. And again, just one of the very many ways that they're out here trying to effectively run the football. I don't have to beat your ass when I can out scheme you. I can out scheme you a little bit. I hadn't seen that one. Not in a little bit. Not in a little bit. Take the tight end and help him chip. Help him get that little boost on that hip right there. And look how it opens that hole, right? We're creasing this off up to four. All right. If 37 were a little bit faster, he'd be up there on the mic and we would just be out the gate, dog. Out the gate. All just with just a little subtle adjustment. Speaking of subtle adjustments, we showed y'all earlier in this, the, the film study, it's important that you guys have audience retention, right? You take, you take visuals of what I'm talking to you about, and then later in the film study, you can recall these things. I told you they were running trap a little bit earlier with an inside veer release from the tight end up to the front side inside linebacker. Well, Oregon at halftime said, hey guys, we can't let that tight end get inside of us and up to our, out, our, our first front side inside linebacker. We have got to force the outside veer release right here just based off of alignment. So you can see the defensive end is a little bit more head up right here. All right, and he's going to strike with his front foot or his inside foot first. Yep, there you go. Boom. Inside foot steps first. It forces that outside release from the Washington tight end. And now, boom, that, that, that dent technique from this defensive end has now happened at a much shorter rate, right? We've condensed this split at a much tighter rate. And now this hole's a lot tighter than it was in that first half. So there, there's your little minor adjustments from the defensive side of the football as well. Love to see it. Love to see a little gamesmanship and a little chess match between two good football coaches. I'm going to 815 right here. They are going to make you personnel match. Okay? They're flipping two tights right here. They're in 12 personnel. All right, we're not watching the outcomes of the plays here, guys. We're talking about the concepts here. All right, they're in 12 personnel. All right, two tights connected to the line of scrimmage, and they're going to go eight-man protection. They're trying to take a shot here on first and 10. Trying to take a shot here on first and 10. They don't get it licked. He selectively and rightfully throws this football away. All right, now the very next snap, 25 seconds left, 20 seconds left. They huddled, broke the huddle, and now all of a sudden they're in 11 personnel, and they're in three by one as spread as spread can get. The only thing more spread is to motion the damn back and go empty. But this is as spread as spread gets. We're just in two by two with the tight, kind of bunched up, trying to take a shot. Now we're out three by one, spread as can be. So they will make you, and I mean make you, personnel match on a down-to-down -down basis. Your analysts have to be on their shit 
up in that press box. Okay? No fiddling around against this football team. You got to pay attention. It's so much different than what I watched. What, what I watched from Alabama this year was, <laughs> how, how y'all like my five stars? That's what I saw. And look, if I was Tommy Reese, I'd be doing the same shit. Nick Saban's got the best talented roster in the world. By the way, I don't think the quarterback is good. I think the quarterback needed to have like 12 design runs a game for him this year. I think the quarterback needed to know, hey, we got two posts. If none of them are open, pull it down. I don't think the quarterback can do some of the stuff that they're going to ask him to do, which makes the fit for Jalen Milrow really, really tough for me as an evaluation. Because this guy's out here processing like a bitch. all right? Now, yeah, they're helping him out in the run game, but a lot of this stuff is, is some, some serious, serious quarterback play going on right here from Penix, like this right here. I can't tell you how many quarterbacks turn this ball down. And what do I mean by that? They're going to see the coverage, and they're going to turn it down. They're going to say, no, thank you. All right, so what do we have here? We got basically what is going to work like double bench uh, with a deep over. All right, what do I mean by that? We're going to get a little hesitation flat, a little hesitation flat. Now, we have a bench route from number four, all right, and we have a bench route from number one, and then we're going to take number 11, and we're going to run him on that deep over. Ideally, we take this safety and he either goes here or he works to that bench route, whatever. However he works, we're working that for, we're reading that front side safety while also paying attention to what this guy does because he's probably going to be res responsible from this deep over from number 11. Let's watch it work and watch where he lets his ball go. And you tell me, you tell me, guys, you tell me if there is a single Alabama quarterback right now with this guy up underneath and this guy over the top that's going to throw that ball right there. Look at it now. Be honest. And this is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah the concept's great. Double bitch Dover, right? That's what I call it. I call it double bitch Dover. All right, out of trips one. All right, but what, what, that's getting turned down a lot. A lot. That's a tough ball to throw for anybody, right? The, the, the runner-up in the Heisman completed that ball this year. 9.38. Okay, first and 10 right here. They're in bunch, and they're going to out and up you. I love this concept here for a multitude of reasons. Um, the, the first and foremost being we're, we're running the out, all right? We got the seam here for number one. We got the seam here for number one, and we're going to do an out and up and an out and up, all right? And when we have them off the line of scrimmage, we avoid man, or we avoid that press, right? That, that them hands in our chest, all right, which really allows us to get free on that out right there, sell it, and then get up. All right, I told you 50-50, right? I think it's 50-50, great concepts, 50-50, great quarterback play. And here's what I'm talking about. You, I watched this live without getting the replay. I might have been looking down at my phone during the replay or whatever it was. Um, I think I was on a football field during this game. But anyways, you watch this from this angle and you're like, damn, he held that ball for a little minute. Ooh, look at that little flick. That was sexy. Ooh, tight window throw. And then you watch the all 22 and you get the, the TV copy right here. Or the, excuse me, the, the end zone cut here in a second. Like that, that's a tight windowed throw right there. That's, that's, some, that's some elite shit, right? That's 50% we're talking about when we're talking about, hey, Penix was great last year. Will that translate for anybody else, right? Is that just a one-off or can, can other people do it? Dude, the ball is so late. Look, comes out of the play fake. All right, uh, dude, now, 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 now. Throw the ball now. All right, he is wide open. He is running the grass. You had it. You double clutched it. All right, our foot our footwork's a little bit off, right? Look, his, his footwork and his, his platform, look at that. His platform is working this way, and we overcome it with our arm. That's why this ball kind of fluttered a little bit on us, right? But we can't really step into shit because the running back's getting pushed in too. Other thing that I noticed about this uh, offense, man, they put a lot. They put a lot on their running backs in pass protection. So if Alabama don't have one of those, they're, they're probably in a lot of trouble. One of those being a back that knows all of these concepts, a back that understands how to do all these things. I saw center and counter, or center and tackle counter right here. Kind of made me a little randy. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I would have loved, loved to play in this system. Okay, I, I as an offensive lineman, get a little uh, bored and a little, uh, you know, 
tired of just banging my head against the wall. And that's what running inside zone 35 times a game feels like. Just da, da. Here it comes. <clears throat> Y'all ever watch that dumbass slap boxing shit? That's what running inside zone 35 times a game feels like. But when we're out here doing, hey, this time pin and pull, this time counter, this time inside zone, this time we're going to mix the screen in. Like when we're doing all these things, defensive linemen are so on their heels all game, I feel like I have the upper hand, all right? And, of course, as always, they have the RPO built off of it. But this is what it does, guys. Like, when you do this much, when you do this much in your run scheme and you have these defensive linemen thinking this much, watch this. I'm going to pause this ball or pause this at the snap. You, you find me. You find me the defensive lineman that gained any ground. Look at these four guys. Okay, look at them. Down set hut. A whole offense line got cleats in the ground right now, moving forward, or at least moving towards their destination. And I see a bunch of guys playing with their weight in their heels, right? Especially this dude. This dude on the front side is playing like he squatted frog because he's, he's, he's been getting picked all game. He's been getting picked, rubbed, kicked, freaking punched in the mouth. They don't know what to do. Now he's getting a double team, and it's like, shit, look at all the displacement, okay? And the displacement, in my opinion, was caused by the scheme because we're getting a lot of stuff at us we get a lot of stuff at us over and over and over again. And look how easy it becomes, right, for our offensive line. Our Joe Moore award-winning offensive line. Look how easy this becomes for them via this replay right here, okay? This nose tackle is supposed to be a really hard combo block. This defensive lineman to this mic is supposed to be a really, really hard combo block. This reaching this backside four eye is really, really hard. But it's done really, really easily because they don't want to get upfield because they're scared to get upfield. And when I got defense alignment scared to get upfield, I have won. I have won, 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 won. Pay attention to the usage. Number four, let's beat a dead horse right quick. All right, but you also gonna pay attention to this. Check this out. I thought this was immaculate, immaculate execution. They're still in the huddle. 14 seconds left on the play clock. They are just now breaking the huddle. We get a shot of Bo Nix on the sideline. Boom. We have broke the, the, the huddle. Now, 10 seconds left. They're going to snap the ball right, wrong. They're going to flip two tights, all right, and condense the set here from a Dunze. And, oh, by the way, one, two, three. They're in 13 personnel, all right, and they're going to run a Dunze here, and they're going to rub the tight end out, and it's going to be a walk-in touchdown, and they're going to go, ha, 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 na, 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 boo, boo. We scored six on UU, okay? Boom, nice and easy. You are going to be manipulated. You're gonna to have to pay attention. You're gonna to have to identify the usage. Your analysts up top are gonna to have to be crazy. They huddle, they mess with personnel, they motion, they do it all. They do it all. And oh, by the way, even if you like try, even if you try to mix it up, mix the looks, right? They're trying to show zone here, but they end up going man. I believe he presses, and he's playing off zone coverage. So guess what they do? They just run a speed out right here because it's all option-based too. Even on third and fours on critical downs, they can get into situations where, hey, look, we got two over two. We're going to run the seams right here. Okay, number one, you're running the go ball. Number two, you got an option on the flex defender. Okay, you got all this space. Okay, as these guys clear out, Okay, it's you versus you up top, and you have a two-way go, meaning you can go in or you can go out, and it's you versus you down here at the bottom, and you have a two-way go, meaning you can go in or you can go out. Now, here's the great part. They got all the answers. Here's the bad part. Alabama and this system is going to have to take some time to build this continuity because guess what? Penix throws this ball, I believe, before number uh, 11 even gets anywhere near out of his break. Yep, you bet your ass. So he knew exactly where he was going. All right, they've thrown this ball thousands of times. As we slow it down, boom, the ball's coming out right now. He has already broken his hands. He has not even gotten anywhere near his top of his break. All right, snaps his head around. The ball's already out. It's going to be put right on his face mask for a first down. And a critical first down. That is essentially the game-winning first down right there. All right, and then we get the last play of the football game. It's third and nine. It's third and nine, guys. And they get 17 yards on pin and pull. And you're sitting at home, and you're thinking, how in the hell do we have all of that happen? How in the hell do we give up 17 yards when we know for a fact, got to get a stop, season on the line, 
Trip the college football playoff on the line. We got no penetration. We got nobody striking blocks. We got nobody doing anything, all right, except getting moved and displaced. Look at all the displacement. We got four guys standing in one hole. We got four guys standing in one hole. You're cooked. You're cooked because I'm going there, all right? Now, how's this happen? How do we have so much confusion? We're a great defense. Coach LaPoy's got us licked up. We are tremendous. We have been great all year. All right, why are we so discombobulated with the game on the line? Well, I don't know. In the last daggum 30 minutes, Brooks has shown us get attacked with stretch. We got inside zone, split zone, truck, pin and pull, trap. I counted three different ways they ran counter, all with wrap attachments, all with RPO attachments. I've seen them run QB truck. And oh, by the way, they're daggum elite in the screen game. Elite in the screen game. So what do we do, man? How do, how do we defend it all? What do we, what, how do, I mean, they're coming to the SEC, Brooks. What are we going to do? 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 Um, I don't know. There's a reason that guy has won everywhere he has gone. There's a reason that guy's put up points everywhere he has gone. When I watch it, it's, it's like all of the pro-style offenses mixed with a lot of what, like, Tennessee's trying to do with, uh, you know, bunches and, and different – but they don't play fast. So it's like they take combinations of every great offense and they have morphed it into theirs and made it a portion of theirs as well. Um, I don't know if he's going to recruit as good of players as Nick Saban ever has. I don't think that dude's got to, though. My God. All right, defensively, they're going to have to figure it out. The whole staff's got to figure it out. Everywhere he's been, it ain't been about defense, it's been about offense, but damn, they are good at offense. And I think we're pretty good at breaking this stuff down. So if you enjoyed any of this, guess what? We have a whole nother hour of traditional talk sports, you know, all that good stuff coming up right now here on this channel. Please, please subscribe. We'll see you in a little bit. Love you.